Hello guys and welcome back to the workshop. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox here. We'll be soft modding it, hard modding it, and we're going to remove the clock capacitor. So this is a definitely not a 1.0 or a 1.1 system. This will be most likely 1.2, 1.3, maybe even 1.4. I think it's somewhere in there in the middle. Uh, as it wasn't produced in Hungary, it was made in China. So not Hungary nor Mexico. And as you can see, it hasn't been opened yet. So we'll be the first ones to dive into it. It's in alright shape. A couple scuffs, but it's looking alright. So I'm going to start by removing the screws. Uh, there are six screws on the bottom. I believe these are T20. So you want to just peel off the edge of the rubber feet so you don't lose them later on because there's some adhesive and at least the rest of the, the you know rest of the um, the feet will be holding it on holding it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these screws. I just I peel off as little as as as, uh, as needed so that we can still keep our uh, our feet. This is interesting. This is the first Xbox I have that has silver screws. Uh, all of the other ones I've opened so far have had black screws. Didn't even know this is a thing. So far I've done 1.0 systems and I also used to have a 1. I don't even know actually. That was the newer one in made in China but that also had black screws that's why it's weird I it's odd because I have an Xbox from so this the date on this one is 2003 August 26th which is weird because uh, the other one I have is from September of the same year so it's like less than a month difference and that one has black screws which means this will be Probably a bit different on the inside. So we'll be using Xbox HDM and the um, soft mod method. I'm gonna need a bit of a helper here. Uh, I'll just use a small screwdriver bit. To get this off, kind of hard. Also, I just cut my nails up, so I can't really use those. But yeah, uh, we'll be using Xbox HDM, and we'll do Endor for the soft mod. It really doesn't matter. We just need something to run. Um, we just need something to run discs, burnt discs, so we can run Hexen and flash our BIOS when it gets to that point. Alright, so we got all the screws out. <clears throat> so the uh, the other system that's from September of the same year, it had an SD chip in it, so that would have been really easy to tease up flash. This one's going to be probably a sharp. I, I just know I'm going to get unlucky with it. It's going to be a sharp. Those ones are a little bit more complicated to tease up flash, but I guess it's not the end of the world. You just need like one extra wire, I believe, on the motherboard. I've never done one of these revisions before. <clears throat> you just have to solder a couple uh, points together and then... Yeah, it will unlock uh, the enable right to the flash. Although for sharp ones, I know you have to remove the wire later on once you flashed it. At least it's advised to remove it. It's just like an enable right. 
probably sends voltage to an enable right pin. I guess you don't want anything bad happening with it. I don't know if it really is important, but I'll do it if it's if it's necessary. But we don't know what it has inside yet because we haven't been there yet. So you can just, like I said, you can peel these stickers off, but I like to just poke through it. It's really whatever. There's nothing important on those stickers. The important information is here. The, um, the date and the where was it made. All right, so we've removed all the screws. That means we can just lift the top off. All right. And another Toshiba, and another, not Toshiba, what is it, Thompson drive. That's the, let me see, that's the f uh, third, third? No, that's the fourth Xbox I have with the, with the freaking uh, Thompson drive. <laughs> but I also have a 1.6 coming up, I'll be working on that as well. That definitely doesn't have a Thompson because it's much quieter. Uh, the... The eject mechanism is much quieter. I mean, I don't really mind. It's just that the Thompson ones have a bad reputation, apparently. I never really had that much trouble with it, though. This is the same hard drive as in my original Xbox. So here we have some... Um, I forgot what these are. I think they're T10s, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. We'll see what works. Does this work? This, uh, this screw holds in the hard drive. And we also have... Um, we have here two screws holding in the, uh, the DVD drive, but we're not gonna have to remove that right away. Just, let's just take out the hard drive. And take a look at the uh, motherboard. We also want to see the... Um, we, see, we want to see if the what capacitor has, you know, how is it doing? Has it leaked anything at all? These Molex cables are kind of crappy. I don't like to work with them too much, but yeah, it's like the angle. I might just undo these screws in the... Uh... Oh, hang on. I should probably loosen this up first and then maybe it would be easier to pull out. I don't want to push it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo the screws on the hard drive caddy first. And then we will remove the power cable from the hard drive. It's it's at a really bad angle, so I don't want to push it. So there's four screws holding it, and it's the same uh, same head as as what holds in the hard drive caddy itself. Got two more here. Hard drive, yeah, it's a Seagate. There we go. Yeah, it's a uh, it doesn't see the size of the net actually. At least I can't see it. Yeah. No, it doesn't say what size it is, but I think it's probably ten gigabytes. Uh, they like to put in ten gig hard drives and just limit it to 8 gigabyte. Okay, and now we're going to remove the DVD drive. We'll need a different screwdriver for that one. I think these are smaller screws. It's like, uh, I think it's a T10 Torx, something like that. If, I, if memory serves, memory serves well. Okay, we don't have to like pull it out, it's okay. It'll come out with the DVD drive itself. We'll remove the power cable. And the data cable will only be removed once we lift it out, it seems. Okay. Alright, here we go. 
There's a DVD drive. It seems pretty good. This one seems to be in really good shape. I don't see too much rust on the shield. All right, now let's see what we have here. We might just get lucky. Oh, nice. Okay, this one's gonna be easy. This one has a. This one has a an ST chip. I don't know if you can see that. That's the uh, T sub chip right there. It's got an ST logo on it. Can I zoom on it? Can I? Sorry, focus. There you go. That's definitely an ST right there. Not sure if I'm holding it upside down. No, I am not. That's the ST logo. So that's cool. And the clock capacitor is actually... It doesn't seem to have leaked anything. Look at that. That's the clock capacitor right there. And it hasn't really leaked anywhere, it seems. That's pretty good. That's really good. I kind of suspected that that will be the case because... Um, this has never actually um, remembered the time, so I'm assuming it must have been just left off for a really long time somewhere. Uh, sorry, out of focus. It was just, uh, you know, it was left in storage for quite some time until I bought it. So that's good. That's pretty cool. So um, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and uh, soft mod the hard drive, and then we'll move on to... T-Sub flashing it. Alright, so here's the setup. Uh, I've, I've burnt a disk with Xbox HDM with all the files necessary. I used Endure to uh, to create the files. I have opted to not use any kernel specific fonts because I didn't check the kernel and if you don't do that then it doesn't really matter. It's, it really, it's whatever. It will work on any Xbox. So then just uh, put the disk into an old uh, computer with an ID interface. The hard drive will have to be the master connector. So you'll have to use the master end, which is the very end of the ID cable that has to be connected to the Xbox. And you'll have to hot swap the cables on the fly. Now it might sound, might sound a bit wild, but trust me, it will work. So make sure you free up the cable as much as you can and then, you know, just plug it in when it's time. So, uh, you can find tutorials on like how to create your, your Xbox HDM disk to use with the system. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already had this, this disk ready for, another, uh, I've used it for another Xbox. So, what I've done is I've unplugged the power for the DVD drive. The data is still connected, the ID cable, but the power is not. That, what that does is it uh, starts error code 12, which unlocks the hard drive temporarily. And the idea is, while the hard drive is unlocked, we have to un unhook the cable and then plug it into the PC so we can write files to it while it's unlocked. So, let's go. I'm going to turn on the Xbox. And it should give me an error 12 because the DVD drive doesn't have power. Okay, I'm going to turn on the PC, and my system's going to just boot into Xbox HDM right away. My keyboard is at kind of an awkward angle, but I should be able to use it. We'll see. All right. Oh, yeah, you also have to have the Internet plugged in for some reason. I don't know why, but it requires Ethernet to be plugged in. I have that, so... All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the ID cable very carefully. And then plug in the PC's ID cable. There's no power in this cable, so don't worry about getting electrocuted or anything like that. Just be careful and it'll be fine. Now we go ahead and hit uh, one. VGA console with Xbox Drive Utilities. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, we'll just create our uh, our soft modded hard drive. Once it's done, we can essentially just plug it back in, and uh, it will have the soft mod installed. All right. So here we go. Uh, not sure how well you can see that, 
but it says uh, you have to type Xbox HD to get into the tools. Okay. And uh, okay. The script assumes dev HDA is the device to the use. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, hang on. No disk drive on found on dev HDA. Okay, I may have it plugged in the wrong way, or we didn't get access to it. Let me try again. All right, here we are. Switch to another computer. So we're gonna see if this will work out. We hope it will. So we're gonna start up the system. Oh, I think I forgot to unplug the uh, DVD drive. Hang on. Yep. It's gonna boot into our dashboard. All right. So, I'm going to turn on the system as well. Um, yeah, here's my disk. I'm going to turn on the system and put the disk in. Oh, thank fuck this furnace turned on. Wait, there's a disk in it? Hang on, what? Oh! Oh, I already have the Xbox HDM in there. Ah, oh, cool. This must be the right disk then. Cool. Alright. <clears throat> Maybe I was trying the wrong disk, but the wrong disk should still be able to do it. So whatever. I mean, it's just probably the disk wasn't read properly or something. Yeah. Anyways, um, since this is in the drive, I feel like this should definitely work. Just fine. So, alright. We're going to restart it. And now let's start up the Xbox. All right. We've got error 12. I'm going to go ahead and swap out the cable. Like so. This one has some pretty good quality. Asus cables. Asus IDE cables. All right. Now let's see if we can do something about this. It's going to work. <clears throat> nope. We're oh, wait, hang on. We get a couple errors, but uh, way less than before. Let me see if we can do something about this. Xbox HD. All right. This script assumes Dev HD is the device. No disk drive found on Dev HD. Are you actually serious right now? I don't know why this is happening. All right. Finally, after just a bit of persuasion, it recognized the hard drive and it seems to be able to write to it as well. So. We're gonna continue. Yes, nice. Okay, finally. All right. So what we're going to do is, uh, we could try and uh, clone this hard drive as well, but um, yeah, scratch that. We're gonna build a new hard drive from scratch, which is number one. Okay, continue. Yes. All right. We're finally able to uh, format the drive. Yes. We're just going to say yes to everything. So this is essentially just going to build a shadow C, uh, put Endure on it and all kinds of crap. So we'll be able to run um, more than just original disks on the system. After that, we're going to take the system apart again. We will solder the 
two points together for the TSOP flash to be enabled. We'll check a uh, BIOS checker if it, you know, it will tell us if we can if we can write the uh, the BIOS or not. And if it lets us, then we'll go ahead and use Hexen to install our new BIOS onto the, uh, you know, existing one. I guess you can expect it to have a bit of trouble here and there. It just happens. Sometimes it doesn't unlock the hard drive at the right time. You don't unplug it at the right time. You know, it's it's a bit finicky, but once you got it working, just do it and then it'll be all good. And it's always useful to have one of these old computers laying around. I mean, these are not really worth selling. So, might as well just keep them around for things like this. Alright, once Xbox HDM is done installing your hard drive, you can turn both Xbox and your PC off and then plug the ID cable back into your Xbox. Don't forget to reconnect the power cable for the DVD drive because we don't need error 12 anymore. Now let's see if it worked. All right, there we go. We have Unleash X, Unleash X installed. So, all right, now we can move on to the next step, which will be TSOP flashing the system. But first we have to solder two points together on the motherboard because this is a either 1.4 or uh, 1.3. Uh, Actually, I'm kind of curious what it is. We could We could go ahead and check it out. So, um, if I can find my hexen disk. Uh, nope, I apparently cannot. Maybe I left it in the other Xbox? I hope I did not. Oh well. Uh, anyways, we have to do other stuff. So, let's get on with it. All right, we're in handheld mode right now. So I've removed the DVD drive and the hard drive. This is what you have to do. Uh, it's kind of hard to record it like this, but you have to bridge this right here where I'm pointing at with the screwdriver. R7D2, those points have to be bridged. And the other one is R7D10, which is I'm shining onto it right now. There we go. So that right there has to be also bridged. So two tiny points, just a bit of solder over there, and then you should be good to go. This is true for 
systems from 1.2 to 1.4. Um, yeah, for 1.0 and 1.1, you have to um, bridge two different points. One of them is actually on the bottom of the motherboard. All right, so once you've soldered these points together, you should fire up your Xbox, see if everything is fine, and now you can boot into the um, the BIOS checker DVD. I believe Hexen also comes with a BIOS checking utility, but yeah, I have this disk, so this so might as well throw it in. Uh, but I think I can't remember what it is exactly, but somewhere I think on the Hexen disk there should be one. So there we go. Um, chip type SD, which is really good, M29, uh, and it says at the end, TSOP question mark, so that tells us that we should be able to now proceed to flash our BIOS, so that's great news, alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Put the Hexen 2019 disc in. As per usually takes a bit of time to, to load up. But once it does, we can uh, select chip, chipped uh, slash TSOP flashed uh, Xbox tools, and we're going to select build a new hard drive. So that's here we go, TSOP flashed slash chipped Xbox tools. We're gonna hit A on that. And uh, mod chip slash TSOP flash, not wind bond. That's what we have to choose because we have an ST chip. And this one is wind bond or sharp flash, but we have ST, so we're gonna pick not wind, of, wind, wind bond, sorry. Use this flash to, use this, uh, to flash a non wind bond T SOP or a mod chip. When Evox launches, select your BIOS chip size and Xbox version, then select your preferred BIOS. Continue. Yes. <clears throat> Alright, so it's going to boot into the Evox menu, and here we go. We're going to go ahead and select Flash 256K BIOS version 1.0 to 1.5 because we have a 1.4. And then we're going to go ahead and I like to use Evox. Uh, we'll do FNG, so Evox M8 plus FNG. Press Y to flash BIOS. Here we go. All right, Xbox will now turn off. And that is it. Now we can uh, go ahead and fire up our Xbox. I'm going to remove the disc as well. And there we go. You can see the Evox logo in the top left. Now you can essentially just go ahead, unplug your hard drive, and you can plug in any other hard drive 
that you want. So that's pretty neat. Although I'd like to change the uh, this. I, I really don't like this this skin. But what we're gonna have to do first? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just leave the hard drive as it is. What we can do now is turn the Xbox off, and let's just plug in another another hard drive. So let's see. I have here an eighty gigabyte master hard drive. I already have um, the files installed too, so I could just plug it in and use it right off the bat. But I'm going to show you how to swap your hard drive to another one. For now, well, I'm just going to use a smaller hard drive. This is the only one I have laying around right now. This is a 20 gigabyte uh, Seagate hard drive. So it's not really an upgrade by much, but I just want to show you the process. I don't want to delete the files on the other hard drive because I think I got some games FTP'd over. Just plug in your new hard drive. Turn on the Xbox with the hex and disk in place. So, Hexen will detect the new hard drive. You have to have the Hexen disk in. Hexen will detect the new hard drive, and then you can go ahead and proceed to install the necessary files on it. Remember, since you have replaced the original Flash with the Evox BIOS, you can essentially do whatever. You can uh, just plug in a new hard drive. You don't have to do. You don't have to worry about any of the locked hard drive business. You know, you can just use unlocked hard drive with the sub flashed system. You just have to drop in the new hard drive, drop in the hex and disk, wait a little bit until it loads, and then you should be good to go. You will recognize it as a um, as a new hard drive, and then start setting it up for you. But yeah, hex and disk take up. We'll have to load up as I've said before, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna. Well, normally it would say uh, Unleash X. Unleashed X has detected a new hard drive and you wanna format it, but we didn't get that message here because I think this hard drive may already be, you know an Xbox hard drive potentially, it's just unlocked. So what we want to do, so you, originally it will just, you know, say this, uh, it will just tell you that uh, Unleash X has found a new hard drive, you want to set it up and then just follow the instructions, it's really simple, and then you'll be dropped into this menu. Now we can go ahead to TSOP flash to chipped Xbox tools, and chipped slash flashed Xbox disk drive upgrades. I have a PAL system, so we're going to do new disk PAL Xbox. The password is AYBX. Alright. This is kind of the, the message you'll be getting at the start, so you just press both triggers and then start again. All right, that's it. I'll start copying some files, and then we'll be dropped into XB Partitioner, where we can set up the the um we can set up the hard drive. We can set it up the way we want.
All right, here we are in XB Partitioner. As you can see, this is a very tiny 20 gigabyte hard drive, so we don't have a lot of space to play around with, but that's fine. Just wanted to show you. Press start and then Y to format it, and then we're done. Just quit from it. And you should have your hard modded Xbox ready to go in uh, Unleash X. Unleash X. I, I can't believe why. For some reason, I keep saying Unleash X because I used to call it Unleashed X. And then when I say Unleash X, I keep wanting to put a an ed at the end, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. So, yeah. <coughs> I believe it will boot back into the dash, but I'm not quite sure, actually. I might have to turn it off. Or is it doing something? No, okay. It is doing something. All right, cool. Oh yeah, we're back in here. So we can just go ahead and uh, shut it down, or we can like go ahead and install some of our programs, like you can install Chimp if you want to, but it's kind of useless for a hard modded system. You can install XBlast OS. You should definitely do that. You can switch uh, regions. You can switch your system's region with that. And uh, inst you can install XBMC, all kind of stuff like that. There's also an XBMC for gamers. I have no idea what that's like. I've never tried that, so let's let's check it out. And uh, yeah, there's also another set of applications I think you can you can do. Oh, you can see it like right above it. Install applications to F. Well, I think one of those is a uh, XP petitioner. I guess we don't really need that. I believe X XB Partitioner should be on it by default. We only really need uh, XBMC and XBlast OS, I suppose. There we go. We can now go ahead and shut down our system. I'm going to remove the disk from the drive so it doesn't boot automatically. And I don't forget that it's in there. Just shut it down. And the next time we boot up. There's our dashboard. So yeah, I can go ahead and FTP games over and do stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly change the uh, the skin because I can't stand this one. That's it. So before we button up this bad boy, we have to take care of one more unfinished business, which is this right here. This is the clock capacitor. Um, the way I like to do this is I just like to gently move it around a little bit. We want to break it off, essentially. This one is actually pretty tight. It seems like this one has... Uh, usually these capacitors are a bit lifted up from the motherboard. This one seems to be pretty tied down so you have to be really careful and just move it around very gently so you can uh, you can basically rip it out. Well I ended up desoldering it in the end. Uh, it was just too tight, it was too close to the board because it, it hasn't even leaked a little bit yet. It's it, it was in really good condition but I I guess I do recommend desoldering it because if you're just gonna wiggle it you potentially 
um, you could potentially have some electrolyte leaking out of the capacitor, so just, just be careful with this one. Reassembling the system is pretty self-explanatory. Just put everything back the way it was. First goes in the DVD drive. One is up right, and then make sure it's you want to make sure the DVD drive sits flush with the system so it doesn't go up at an angle and it seems like this is fine so we can just grab the screwdrivers and screw the DVD drive into place. The thing I like more about these systems, more about these uh, unopened ones, is that generally, I'm not saying every single one of them, but most of them will be in better shape because if a system was, let's say, chipped, uh, the, DVD drive, the DVD drive most of the time will not work. It will mean slightly less work for you if there's a chip in it. Like, I do have a mod-chipped Xbox that I've ended up soft-modding. I might make a video on that later. Uh, the reason for that is because I could not get in-game reset functionality to work, so I just ended up soft-modding it, and then it works you know, alongside with the mod chip, it's completely fine. The mod chip, what it does is it lets you run any DVD and it eliminates the need of a hard drive lock, which is pretty handy. So I can have a soft mod with an unlocked hard drive. <clears throat> so I didn't have to T-Sop flash that one. But these are generally in, in better shape. So I'm going to put in this hard drive. This is a uh, an 80 gigabyte max store drive. We'll be dropping that in here as soon as I can um, find the hard drive cage. Uh, where did I? Oh, that guy. I see it. Right here. So, just gonna have to drop this in. Actually, we have to also screw in the hard drive. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna just plug it in. Make sure the hard drive is in a cable select. That's what the system uses. But master also works because it's on the master end of the cable. The further away part of the ID cable is the master. Like that. Then we just drop it in. Like so. And then we need to screw it in. Actually, I'm not sure if this cable goes above the other. It might. Yeah, I think I think that's how it goes. The um the power cable goes underneath the idea cable. Okay, make sure it's in properly. All right. Then we need our um, four screws that were used to hold in the hard drive. And just screw it in, but I'm running really low on memory space, so I'm gonna uh, stop the video here and then we'll continue on. By the way, if you want to use a SATA hard drive with the system using a SATA hard drive adapter from uh, parallel ATA to SATA, then uh, You'll have to use an 80 wire cable. This is a 40 wire cable. This is what came with the system. It's not good enough. It will not see the hard drive. Uh, so you'll just have to use a, uh, a better cable. And then it will work fine. Also, you don't have to buy StarTech adapters. Don't listen to other people who tell you that you have to. Because the 
Chinese variant works just fine. And there we go. Systems put together. It could use a bit of cleaning, which I'll do soon. And then we'll try it out for a, one last time. Our Xbox is assembled, and I think it's ready to play some games for us. So let's fire it up. I know this is an amazing camera angle, but I'm kind of short on space. And I've put in the 80 gigabyte Mac Store hard drive. I'm actually going to move it over here so I can see better. And there you go. That's the that's the 80 gigabyte Mac Store hard drive. It has a different skin selected in Unleash X. So let's see. What do we have here? Why don't we fire up some uh, Colin McIntyre 3. It's supposed to be 3, not 2003, but here we go. Plays just fine. So, there you go. That is it for this video, I think. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. I'm gonna... Oh, there we go. We can kind of see things now. Six left, seventy. Lock five right opens. And the soft reset combination is both triggers L and R. Start select. Sorry, not select. Back. And there you go. That's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you again soon. In this bit, I'll be explaining my method of soft modding the Xbox. You don't have to use this method if you have a better solution, but I found this to be fairly simple. It might be outdated, but you don't need any extra things like a game or, or a USB converter or anything like that. You just need an old computer with an ID interface and hot swap the hard drive. So first of all, we're going to extract this folder and then we'll run Endure. So here you should select add UDDA and create Xbox HDMI installer. You can install the uh, a kernel specific font if you know your kernel but you don't have to we don't need it because we're going to overwrite all of this anyways it'll ask you to browse your folder where ender needs to be installed you just pick the linux folder inside the xbox hdm folder click ok install Once that's done, go ahead, open the Xbox HDM folder, the Linux folder. So this is our folder that will be writing to the disk. Uh, but first we have to click make ISO win. This will create an ISO file for us. This will be a bootable CD image. You can use uh, Rufus, I suppose, to create a thumb drive. If your PC can run off of a thumb drive, if it can boot off of a thumb drive, some older computers cannot. So I recommend burning a disk. And then here it is, Linux dot uh, ISO maybe. I don't know. It's a disk image file. You just burn it with image burn, and you'll have a disk you can run on your computer. <laughs>